We're here this afternoon to change the course of history. After decades of division and conflict, we mark the dawn of a new Middle East. Once again, let me congratulate the people of Israel, the people of the United Arab Emirates, and the people of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Congratulations. Hello, Scripture of the Day. I'm coming to you from across the street of the South Lawn of the White House. That's right, President Trump is in there right now, and we got to witness, we are having such an amazing time here in Washington, D.C., we got to witness an historic occasion where President Trump spoke right on the balcony there. We got pictures of it, that's our video of it right there, and we got to see him broker peace between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, and also Israel and Bahrain. Now, this is absolutely amazing to me because I have I've barely ever been to Washington, D.C., and on the day we're here making Scripture of the Day videos about the book of Isaiah, on that same day, there's two countries I've been to outside of North America. I've been to Israel, love going there, can't wait to go back in the summer of 2021, and I've been to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates where we support missionaries, where I would love to go again and, and help the teaching there. So to see that those two places in the Middle East, Israel and the United Arab Emirates, to see them uh, come together for peace right here today. I mean, this was an amazing thing, everybody, not to mention our dear brother at Compass HB, Mr. Scott Carr, served our country in Bahrain, which just declared peace with Israel. And so we're here studying Israel, we're here studying Jerusalem and what Isaiah is writing. And right behind me right now is the most famous house in America, the White House. And the question on everybody's mind in America these days, whose house is it gonna be? As we elect our next president, November 3rd, 2020, will it be President Trump again or will it be Joe Biden. That is, I mean, so many people are talking about it. They're thinking about it. Whose house is going to be the White House? Now, today's chapter is Isaiah 6. And let me tell you why we wanted to uh, film this video about Isaiah 6, one of the most famous chapters in all of the Bible. And here, right behind me, take a look, turn around, scripture of the day. There, there is Marine One, right while we're filming, uh, coming to pick up the president. Now, Technically, it's not Marine One until the president gets on it, but it's gonna fly right over us to the South Lawn, and we're gonna get to watch this happen live. We don't get to see this every day in Huntington Beach, everybody, in Orange County, but this is what's happening here in D.C. Marine One. Marine One is going right in there to pick up the president who's going to a town hall on ABC in Philadelphia today. So uh, this is really cool that we get to be here while this is happening. Today's chapter is Isaiah 6, and it goes so well with us just seeing the executive branch in action because the context of Isaiah 6 verse 1 is in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. Now, that first part about King Uzziah dying, that might be the kind of thing we would just gloss over read on our way to the rest of the chapter that maybe we understand better. But we know better now here on Scripture of the Day, and we know that King Uzziah, also known as Azariah in Kings, he reigned for 52 years. Okay, so that would be like someone getting elected president 13 times. That's how long Uzziah, a good king, was reigning in Israel. So you can imagine when he died, that must have felt like the end of an era. For a lot of people, that would have been their whole life. He was the king. And that's when Isaiah has his vision. And it's interesting that we don't read this vision in chapter 1. We get it in chapter 6. And Isaiah sees who's really in charge, who's really the executive in control of everything. He sees Yahweh sitting upon the throne in heaven. 
So it's interesting that for the first five chapters, it was all about how the nation, Judah, even the city of Jerusalem, they are not listening to the word of the Lord. They are despising the Holy One. And after we can see the sin of the people, and how they're not looking to God, we get this amazing vision of who God is from Isaiah's perspective. And so the idea is that we're to see God in contrast to the corruption all around us, even in contrast perhaps to our worldly leaders. In contrast to King Uzziah, we see the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up. He's bigger than the entire temple. Just the train of his robe is filling the temple. And we see the amazing creatures, the seraphim, with their six wings all around the throne. But the emphasis is on holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, we want to take a moment, you and me right here, in the beautiful National Mall, right by the White House. We wanna take a moment, and we wanna talk about how we have a holy God. Can I get an amen from anybody? Because it's something in heaven that seems like a really big deal, but it doesn't get talked about enough down here on earth. So let's have our eyes be opened and see through the eyes of Isaiah here who God really is that, hey, from Isaiah 6 to Revelation 4, when we get a glimpse into the throne room of heaven, They're talking about the holiness of God. And this idea that God is holy, it's it's a theme throughout the book of Isaiah. He mentions the holiness of God way more than all the other books in the law and prophets and writings put together. In fact, the Holy One is mentioned 25 times in the book of Isaiah. So this is a clear way that God wants to reveal himself to you. He's doing it here through the prophet Isaiah. God wants you to know that he is holy. He wants you to know that means he is set apart and there is no one like him. You keep following the thread of the Holy One of Israel and he's gonna make it very clear. There is no one like me. God is unique, set apart alone. And when we encounter his holiness, you can see from Isaiah's perspective in verse five, when he beholds the holiness of God, he says, woe is me. So this is, should really impact us now because we've been looking at the woes that Isaiah said from God. He said woe to the leaders of the nation. He was giving all kinds of woes because of all the sin there in Judah and Jerusalem. I mean, we've been studying the coming destruction through the pronouncement of woe. So for Isaiah, the prophet of God, to pronounce woe upon himself, see, that's what happens when you see the holiness of God. You see yourself for who you really are. Isaiah has an amazing privilege of speaking the word of the Lord. He is a mouthpiece to the vision, to the message of God. And yet, what does he say right away? Woe is me, I'm ruined, I'm undone, for I'm a man of what? Unclean lips. What we would think would be the best part of Isaiah, him speaking the word of God, he immediately knows that he's unclean in what he says and everyone around him is unclean. And so if we really encounter the holiness of God, If we can really have our eyes opened to see him holy, high and lifted up, we will, in contrast to God, see ourselves in our sin. And that's why the story is so beautiful here when one of the seraphim, which just must be an amazing creature in and of itself, when it flies to Isaiah and it brings a burning coal from the altar, And it says, behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, your sin atoned for. We know that the way our sin is atoned for is through the sacrifice and through our priest, Jesus Christ. He's the one who's gonna bring us into the throne room of God. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. But but we gotta see, if we can read Isaiah 6 today and we don't come away blown away by the holiness of God, then, then we've missed the point. And as impressive as it is to have Marine One fly right over your head and be here when the president's working peace deals with Middle East nations, it's nothing compared to the holiness of God. We know that no human leader, no president, whether we voted for him or not, no human being is set apart and holy like God is. 
None of us are without sin and, and none of us just have the transcendent glory of God. And so here's what we're doing in the White House giveaway, everybody. I wanna encourage you to leave a comment on this video and share a verse or, or even just a definition of the holiness of God. What's a verse in the Bible? Maybe you could start reading through Isaiah. If you're pumped up from reading Isaiah this week, start looking for other Holy One verses in the book of Isaiah. But the holiness of God is throughout the scripture. What is a verse that helps you really see God high and lifted up, set apart? We're supposed to sanctify him in our hearts as holy. We learned that recently in 1 Peter 3.15. How do you make sure that in your mind, in your eyes, in your heart, God is set apart and there is no one like him in your understanding and you even see your sin in contrast when you really gaze upon the glorious holiness of God. So if you could leave a verse or something you do that helps you think about the holiness of God, because we're all living here on earth. We all think the presidential election's a big deal. We're all caught up in what's going right now in the time of coronavirus. But if we got one glimpse of the glory of God, if we got to see him high and lifted up on his throne, we would be saying along with the seraphim today, holy, holy, holy. And so that is a, the image of God we want to take away from Isaiah chapter six. We're not just here in Washington, D.C. to make connections from Isaiah's time to our time, from Israel to America. We're reading through the Bible because we want a revival and we want to know God. We want to see him for who he really is in a personal relationship. Even though he is transcendent in holiness, he can be imminent in our hearts. So let's really think about who God is. Take some time, spend it in his presence, and worship him as holy. And I'll see you for more. Yeah, that's right. So if you leave a comment, you enter the giveaway. And somebody, I'll, I'll tell you, what, we're going to get something that represents the White House. And we're going to give it to a lucky winner. We haven't had a giveaway for a while here on Scripture of the Day. Giveaways are back, everybody. Leave a comment, enter the giveaway. And I'll see you for more from Washington, D.C. What an amazing week we've had so far. Can't wait to see what's next time here on Scripture of the Day.